Hey everybody, Pat here from West Corners Custom Cycles. Welcome back to the Underground Garage. As always, I want to thank all my subscribers. I want to thank everybody for ringing the bell, getting notifications when our videos come up. I want to thank everybody for the comments that they leave. Uh, it gives us insight what we're doing and you know what kind of content to put up. Um, I'm back on this 1975 uh, Sports of Transformation video. This is video number six. It's actually done. It's all complete, mocked up, ready to go. I wanted to uh, take a minute to uh, address something that was brought to my attention. Uh, a couple of people that I know personally have brought it to my attention that maybe a lot of you people out there want to see more hands on. You want to see sparks flying, welding, everything I do and how I do it. Um, uh, that's not a problem. I'm going to start doing that from now on. I wanted to Kind of let everybody know that up until this point on this channel, everything that I have put up has been filmed and edited and everything long before this channel went up. And that's why it is the way it is. But from this moment on, you're going to start seeing a lot more hands on. Um, with that in mind, I went out to get this Sportster out of the garage two days ago so I could do the walk around, show you where it's at, get it fired up and rip it up and down the road. New York State weather was not permitting. Uh, so I had to wait for the rain and everything to go by. So yesterday I went to bring it out and I got thinking to myself, when I started this build, I had the intentions of doing it within a couple of weeks to a month. Um, life gets in the way. It's been over a year. So it's been sitting on the lift. Um, there's been gas in the carburetor. I figured I'd better check that. I pulled the drain plug on the carburetor and green gas comes out. So that's not good as all of you know. So I had to go through the carburetor on it. Um, I made a video yesterday of me going through the carburetor on it. I got it back on the bike last night. I knocked off for tonight. So we are going to go out right now. We are going to get back on this project. I'm going to show you where I'm at, how I adjusted this carburetor up. We're going to get the air cleaner back on it. We're going to get some fresh gas in it. And you and I together are going to fire this thing up for the first time in a year and a half, two years since I bought it. And then I'm going to take it, rip it up and down the road. Front fender and rear fender are not painted yet. Um, paint guys backed up quite a bit, so I might even see if I can't do this myself on the on the paint work. I worked for a body shop years ago. Um, it's not one of my strong points. I'm more of a mechanical guy, so we'll see how that goes. But without any further ado, let's get in the garage. Let's you and I finish this bike out and rip it up and down the road. All right, I'll see you. Hey everybody, Pat here from West Corners Custom Cycles. Welcome back to the Underground Garage. Uh, still working on this 75 Sportster Transformation build I've been working on. Got the thing all done, all mocked up, all ready to go. Was going to pull it out today and start it for you. Thought I might better look at this carb. I know I changed the tank out on it, but the carb is still the same and I didn't remember draining the old gas out of it. So I pulled the plug on the float bowl. Green gas came out of it. That's not good. So... As you can see, I pulled the carb off. This is not the original carb to this bike. The original carb to this bike was a can. This is a Makuni that somebody else has put on their aftermarket. Uh, but nevertheless, we got to go through it. So I figured I'd make a little bit of a video showing how to do that. It was real simple. This end just had a hose clamp on it. had a round uh, air filter on it. Same on this side, popped into a rubber uh, grommet on the manifold and had a hose clamp on it. Took those two off, unscrewed the slide out of the top and took that out. It actually doesn't look too dirty inside, but I'm still going to go through it anyway. want to make sure all the jets and everything are cleared out and that it's not going to give me an issue when I start it. I'm hoping to have this back on the bike within an hour or so. I have my ultrasonic cleaner on right now. It's heating up. As soon as it gets hot enough, I'm going to put all the parts in there. Let them cook for a little bit, uh, probably five, ten minutes, get it all back out, put it all back together and adjust it up. And then I'm going to take it out, put it on the bike, get it out in the yard and do a walk around on it. And then I'm going to fire it up and rip it up and down the road for you guys. All right, let's get on this. First off, got to pop the float ball off. Four screws on the bottom. One, two, three four on each corner. The 
these uh, two green hoses you see on here are just overflow hoses. Some of that green gas dripping out of there, that's going to stink like crazy. It is extremely lacquered up. This gas must have been in this bike for quite a while when I got it from the guy because even after a year, it shouldn't be this lacquered up. But we'll get her taken care of. Okay. Now, these Makuni carburetors have a set of floats in them that rise up and down. And when they do, they rise up and down against this little lever here. That's what makes your needle and seat open, lets gas in or shuts it off from going into the, the, to the float ball and filling that up. As you can see, not too horribly dirty, but uh, another thing I found out about these, be very gentle when you're taking them apart if you've got a Makuni because from what I was told, they don't make the gaskets anymore. And if you mess them up, then you're kind of screwed. But uh, so we're going to clean these up, cook it up, get all the stuff out of it. Now with any carburetor that you're doing, a couple of things you always want to remember. One is on all the adjustments, you want to take and screw the, uh, you want to screw the screws in on the, the mixture screw, the air and fuel mixture screw, and on the idle screw, which is right here with the spring on it. This way you know where they were set, and once you get it all back together, you can reset those where they were before. And it should be, you know, enough to get you started and get it going to where you can adjust it and go from there. All right, I'm going to get this apart. And uh, like I said, on this idle screw, I'm going to turn it by halves. There's one half. Yeah, it was about one and a quarter out. So... Now this, uh, this fuel mixture screw, I'm going to try and show you right here, is well, that one's seated right down, which isn't good. All right. I may have to go online and check that. I don't think that one should be out more than it is. They got that one screwed right down in there. But I'm going to get this apart, get it cleaned up, get it back together. And we're going to see how this thing runs down the road. Okay, everybody. I know I told you I got this carburetor on here again last night. But uh, I came out here because, like I said, I wanted you guys to see everything. I want to show you exactly how to get this carburetor back on there. What you need to do, taking it off is the exact reverse. But uh, as you can see, this is the manifold. This is a clamp right here that holds the carburetor on. The end of the carburetor just goes in there and you clamp it down. Now, as far as your slide goes... On the inside of this carburetor, I don't know how well you can see it, there's a little brass part right here in the middle. Let me see if I can get you a little light in there to see it better. That brass thing sticking up, you got to make sure that that needle goes down in that hole where it's supposed to. If you don't, your carburetor's not going to work right and the cable's going to keep popping off. All right, now I'm going to show you how to put this in there. Get the light back where it was. All right. There's a groove right here by my thumb. And when you go down inside the top of this, you got to line that up with a little brass thing sticking out the side right here by this hose. You'll see it won't go down in unless you're lined up. 
Now, is when you go down inside here, inside the carburetor, and make sure that needle's going where it's supposed to go. And you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing inside of here, but I'm just feeling it out, making sure that it's going where it's gotta. Come on, girl. Give me a hard time. Well, that's not cooperating one bit. from this side. Okay, I had to cut away for a minute. Ran into an issue there where I split the top hose here and it started leaking everywhere, but I'm back. Okay, now inside this carburetor here, I don't know if you can see, if you pick this, this up, you can see the slide going up and down. It won't go all the way down if, sorry, if that needle isn't in the hole where it's supposed to be. Now this is how the top goes on it. Make sure you don't cross these threads because they're very fine and it'd be easy to do. Screw this down on there. And this is a lock nut for your line, your throttle cable. Screw that down and tighten it up in a minute. Now, small end of the carburetor goes in the manifold. It'll just pop in there. There's a little groove. You'll know when it's popped in, right? You'll feel it snap in there. And then, this clamp right here, you tighten that down, and that'll hold it in tight into the manifold. Tighten that down with a Phillips head. Yeah, I probably could have got a longer Phillips head, huh? Okay. I'm going to finish that up with a 5 16th. That's what size nut this is. Okay, once we get this tightened down. I'm going to rehook up the fuel line that broke on us. Get this down out of the way. Don't forget, get your hose clamp on there. All right, I'm back. We have the clamp on the back here that holds the carburetor to the manifold. That's all tightened down. Um, got this line fixed. Got everything screwed down tight on that. 
Now, I'm not sure if this is a 38 or a 40 millimeter carburetor. It is a Makuni. It's a Japanese carburetor. It is not the original. It is not the original carburetor to this bike. And uh, where the original one went, I really don't know. That was replaced long before I got here or before it got to me. Um, I am going to show the adjustments on this carburetor for you. I looked online. I could not find the uh, anybody giving me the um, original, you know, stock settings for this carburetor. Uh, there's two settings on it that I noticed. One is this one right here. This one was turned out one and a quarter turns. This other setting right here. This one is screwed in all the way. I don't believe it originally was supposed to be screwed in like that. I think the reason it is, is because it has an aftermarket K&N filter. And these things let in a lot more air than what the original stock air filter let in. So I think they had to screw that down um, to adjust it to where it would run and stay running. Uh, since I couldn't find any stock settings for this, I just set it back to the way it was. And I'm going to put the air cleaner back on it, and I'm going to get some gas in it, and we're going to see if we can fire this up. All right, be back in a minute. Okay, let's get some fresh gas in this thing. Without spilling it all over the tank. That ought to be enough to get this thing fired up. All right, everybody. Let's see if we can get this thing to fire up. I've had it on a battery tender, so I'm assuming that the battery is charged up enough to roll this thing over and start it. So, oh, better turn the pet count on. Don't you start blinking on me. Okay. That don't sound healthy now, does it? Okay. Pop this choke on. Looking like a lot of gas. And that fuel filter. I think it would be enough. Let's see what's going on. Okay. Give me a second. I'm going to throw this thing on a charge. See if I can't get a better charge on it. Get it rolling over better. Okay, everybody. I got this thing hooked up to the battery charger. I got the air cleaner back off it. Uh, still doesn't want to start, so I'm going to give it a 
little, 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 and I cannot emphasize enough, very little shot of some starting fluid to see if she'll pop off. Um, not recommended. This stuff is not just flammable. It is explosive. So let's see what that does. Choke it a bit. God, that starter sounds horrible. I'm wondering if we're even getting gas. All right, let me grab a wrench. I'm going to pull the plug and the float ball just to make sure we're getting gas down into that thing. Looks like we're getting fuel that far. Okay. I may just have this thing so freaking flooded. All right, I'm going to pull these spark plugs. Look at what they look like. Maybe we'll wind up replacing them. See you in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can tell just by looking at them that the gaps aren't the same. You know, split fire plug, which I'm not crazy about, but and this one's soaked. So chance one's fouled. I think I'm gonna get another set of plugs, put them in here. These are screaming ego plugs, but all right, let me get a new set of plugs, put them in here, see if that makes any difference. We'll go from there. Be back in a minute. Okay, everybody. When we left off, I was on my way to go get another set of spark plugs for this uh, 75 Sportster. I got thinking about it, and I was thinking if one of the plugs is wet, then I'm obviously getting gas through the carb down to the cylinder. And if it's wet, it must not be firing either because it would have burned off the fuel on the end of the spark plug. So I decided to do some testing before I went and got the plugs and uh, started testing the ignition system and found out I wasn't getting any spark out of the two spark plug wires. So I'm going to take you around. I'm going to show you this bike. It is all done, mocked up, uh, you know, except for some paint on the front fender and rear fender and uh it's not firing it was starting and running when i put it on the lift that was like i said a year and a half ago so um i want to take you around show you what i tested show you how i tested it so you'll know yourselves and uh show you where we're at what i found out and where we're going okay check it out okay here it is this is that 75 sportster it's all done put together this is what it's going to look like permanently what I didn't have done on it last time I took you around it was one, this chain guard wasn't on there and I had to make a little bracket for it on the front side underneath that oil tank. You can't really see it. it hooks to the front of the fender and uh, gives it a little support. So I got that done and uh, that's what she's looking like. Anyway, I'll take you around it, and then I'll explain everything I did to find out about the spark issue. But 
This is what it looks like. Around the back side here. Sorry about the glare. Get back and get a better view. And the other thing I did on this side was on this linkage down here. There was just a threaded rod connecting these two. I had some aluminum tubing, so I cut a piece of length, painted it red to match the, the pipes and the pinstriping I'm going to put on the tank and fenders. So, that's it. But, now, what I did, I tested the end of the spark plug wires. Found out I was not getting spark. So, then I figured I'd chase it. Check the battery. I've got good power at the battery. Pull the points cover. When I got over here to the points cover, pulled that off, rolled it over. It was getting good spark out of the points. Now, if I went up to the coil, which is right there. You can see the wire disconnected from it. And this side... With this black wire here is the side that comes from the points so i tested right there when the wire was hooked up to the coil yesterday and rolled it over and i was getting flashing on my test light this is what i was doing all the testing with just a regular test light negative to positive put the clamp on negative and start testing you didn't have to put it on anything you could see it flashing in the points up here at the coil I touched it on there rolled it over and you know the light was flashing on and off like it should be now if you go around the other side of the coil here well, get in here where I can see and yeah, that's gonna be right in the way anyway there's a white wire right here that hooks up to this side of the coil that's constant 12 volt so the light should stay on all the time and you can test it for 12 volt but that comes right from the battery when the ignition is on so that all tested good so then there's a way to test the coil since everything going up to the coil was okay Next thing to test is the coil. Now, the way you test the coil is you unhook the wires like you see they are, and you test those two tiny leads, one side to the other, with a 12-volt tester. You put it on ohms, and it should read anywhere from 3 to 5 ohms on an old iron head like this. The newer ones are a little less ohms. I believe they're 2 or 3. Two to three ohms it should be on the newer ones anyway that tested okay it came out 5.6 ohms so then you go to where the spark plugs and you can see I've got it unplugged you go where the two spark plugs plug into it and then you take your 12 volt tester set on ohms now you want to set it for 20k which is 20,000 ohms and then test your two leads put one in each spark plug hole and you should read anywhere from I believe it's uh, 16 to 20 thousand ohms if it doesn't read in that range and double check in your manual just to make sure that I've got the range right but uh, if that doesn't test where it like it should then you've got a bad coil and da 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 guess what we don't have the right ohms coming through that. When I tested it with my tester, it actually read, it read the number one with a period after it. And I thought maybe I wasn't getting a good connection, so I tested my tester on the battery, and it read good. I jumped it across the two uh, primary leads, which are the small ones, and it came up five ohms again. And then I even took two bolts and put them in the spark plugs holes to make sure I was getting a good connection and tested on the end of those. 
still came up with the same reading. So we got a bag coil. So that's where we're at on this. Um, I'm going to get a coil coming. As soon as that gets here, I'll get that mounted on there. I'll show you. We'll test it and uh, see if we got spark. That should cure it. We should be able to fire this up. And then I can take it and rip it up and down the road for you. All right. Well, until the coil comes, I'm going to get some more content out to you and maybe show you the next project we're going to get working on because this one's going to be a few more days. Okay. I'll see everybody later. As always, be good, be kind to each other. Live life behind bars. Peace out. Okay, everybody, I want to thank everybody for checking out the video. Uh, as always, I want to invite everybody out there to like, subscribe, ring the bell, join the Underground Army, go on our channel, check out all the previous content we put out. There's a lot out there. There's a lot of cool stuff to see. Um, again, be kind to each other. Be good. Live life behind bars. Peace.